This Simple History episode is brought to you by World of Warships. The game is free to play and referred to as the thinking man's action game because it's the perfect balance of action and strategy. You can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. In this game, you can unlock new ships and dominate the oceans with 30 million players worldwide. At Simple History, we draw the artwork of the ships we feature, and World of Warships takes this to an extreme level of detail, as each in-game ship is faithfully recreated using 3D scans of the real-life historical version. Use our exclusive code and get a free USS Langley aircraft carrier, which allows for a completely different form of fast-paced World of Warships gameplay. Click the link below to play World of Warships and collect an exclusive bonus starter pack. New players can register with the code PLAYLANGLEY2019 to receive 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, the USS Langley aircraft carrier, 3 days of premium time, and more. Were there Soviet troops in the Vietnam War? In the 1960s, as the conflict in Vietnam turned into an all-out war, America became increasingly involved in supporting the capitalist South Vietnamese government against the communists in North Vietnam, led by President Ho Chi Minh. In 1964, the U.S. started to send large numbers of military ground troops and Air Force units. This was because of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where a North Vietnamese torpedo boat allegedly attacked the USS Maddox. The events of 1964 started a trend that saw the United States deploy ever-increasing numbers of troops to directly fight the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong. By 1969, the United States had 534,000 military personnel deployed in the Vietnam theater of war. Alongside them were also a significant number of troops from its allies, including those from Laos, Cambodia, South Korea, Thailand, Australia, Taiwan, the Philippines, and New Zealand. Against this backdrop, the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China started to increasingly support the North Vietnamese communist government, as they hoped to expand the number of communist states in Asia. Unlike the American involvement, the Soviet Union's engagement in the Vietnam War was highly secretive. However, what can be gathered is that they gave direct and indirect aid to the North Vietnamese on a vast scale, but stopped short of putting actual Soviet combat troops onto the front lines. Prior to the Gulf of Tonkin incident, Soviet interest in North Vietnam had been minimal, barring the obligatory communist solidarity. However, the increasing presence of America in the region led to the Soviet Union fearing that the balance of power in the region set by the Geneva Accords could be disturbed. The Soviets also feared that if North Vietnam fell to the Americans, they would lose prestige amongst the ongoing and often communist-led decolonization struggles in the Third World. Moreover, following the Sino-Soviet split, the Soviets sought to increase their influence in Vietnam at the expense of China. Therefore, under the new leadership of Chairman Leonid Brezhnev, the Soviets gave vast amounts of equipment to the North Vietnamese to assist with their war effort. By 1969, the Soviet Union replaced China as North Vietnam's biggest supporter and was supplying Ho Chi Minh's government with around $1.5 billion worth of aid annually. They supplied Ho Chi Minh's government with small arms, including huge numbers of Russian-made AK-47 assault rifles. They also supplied tanks, jet aircrafts, helicopters, trucks, artillery guns, and medical expertise. The Soviets even trained North Vietnamese personnel in the Soviet Union at various military schools and academies. Moreover, around 2,000 Soviet advisors were stationed in Vietnam, assisting with radar and anti-aircraft installations. Typical weapons supplied were the PT-76 amphibious light tanks, supersonic MiG-21 interceptors, man-portable RPG-2 recoilless rocket launchers, and S-60 57mm anti-aircraft guns. It's estimated that by the late 1960s, as much as 75% of all military and technical equipment being supplied to the North Vietnamese Army was of Soviet origin and over 10,000 Soviet military personnel were either stationed in Vietnam or visited there as observers throughout the conflict. However, it should be remembered that the assistance given by the Soviets paled in comparison to that given by the Americans to the South Vietnamese. The Soviet aid was hampered by the great distance it had to travel to get to Vietnam. As it could not pass through China following the Sino-Soviet split, it had to travel 7,500 miles overseas from ports in Eastern Europe. 
Moreover, Soviet and Eastern European ships heading for Vietnam were often trailed by American airplanes or Navy boats. Similarly, the sea route was high risk. During the American bombings of Haiphong, Soviet ships were hit and Soviet sailors were wounded. Most of what the Soviets supplied was given as aid, whereas the equipment and weapons supplied by the Chinese was given in the form of a loan with deferred long-term payments. It should be noted that prior to the increase in Soviet assistance, the Chinese were greatly involved in assisting North Vietnam. In 1967, around 170,000 Chinese soldiers were stationed in North Vietnam, far more than the total number of Soviet troops ever stationed in the country. However, for a variety of reasons, Chinese aid to Vietnam rapidly declined. For one, the North Vietnamese, embroiled in a struggle for national self-determination, were reluctant to accept aid from China, a country that for centuries claimed suzerainty over Vietnam, which only ended following French colonization. Moreover, by the end of the 1960s, the debilitating effects of Chairman Mao's cultural revolution on China's economy forced them to scale back their assistance. Soviet advisors were stationed in Vietnam to help counter the escalation of the U.S. bombing campaign that gained momentum from 1965 onwards with Operation Rolling Thunder and Operation Arclight. To assist the North Vietnamese, the Soviets supplied and trained North Vietnamese soldiers to use anti-aircraft equipment, including the highly advanced and effective SA-2 Guideline surface-to-air missile. The majority of anti-aircraft guns and missile sites in North Vietnam were thought to have been initially manned by Soviet advisors. This was because the Soviets didn't have enough time to train the North Vietnamese before Operation Rolling Thunder. During 1965 and 1966, they downed 48 American aircraft. However, while Soviet soldiers were authorized to engage the enemy, they were officially designated as military experts so that the government could claim that no Soviet troops had served in the Vietnam War. This was even extended to Soviet pilots who were permitted to replace Vietnamese pilot casualties. For example, Colonel Vadim Sherbakov reportedly shot down six American aircraft in 1966. While in some instances the Soviets did engage with American forces, for the majority of the time they strictly performed supporting roles. For example, they deployed intelligence gathering ships in the South China Sea to relay advanced warnings of American bombing raids, which proved to be quite effective. There were also rumors of American soldiers encountering North Vietnamese units on the front line, accompanied by European-looking men with blue eyes and different uniforms. Many Americans believe these were Soviet Special Forces advisors. It's also thought that the Soviet Spetsnaz GRU, the special forces controlled by the Soviet military intelligence, attacked a secret American base in Cambodia, which borders Vietnam in 1968. The base had been used by the Americans for reconnaissance missions and rescuing downed pilots. The Soviet secret forces destroyed the Americans' new Cobra attack helicopters stationed there, which were just starting to enter service at the time. While there is no concrete proof to prove whether these Russian actions actually occurred, the Soviets did have KGB officers stationed in North Vietnam who were engaged in processing and disseminating information. Also, they analyzed down American planes or captured weaponry to assess the strengths of the enemy. Therefore, it was common to see Soviet intelligence agents or technicians examining downed B-52 bombers or F-4 Phantom fighters. Sometimes these agents would send back intact items to Russia, where they could be taken apart and assessed more fully. It is known that this was the fate of several captured American F-5 Freedom Fighter jet aircrafts towards the end of the war. The different approaches by the Americans and Soviets in the Vietnam War can best be understood by looking at the casualty figures for the conflict. It's estimated that over the course of the war, around 58,000 U.S. military personnel were killed and over 300,000 wounded. In comparison, the total number of Soviet Union military personnel killed was stated to be just 16. Subscribe and click the notification bell for more Vietnam War videos.